Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told out of voice radio. So today, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of cards that are about to get really, really good. We're talking primarily today about Shedinja and Fairy Charms. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, all will become clear. Now, it has been announced that in August, August the 15th to be precise, we are having our rotation. And our rotation has been confirmed as Ultra Prism On. And there are a couple of things that are happening and I have, I have covered the rotation extensively. I've done a headlines video. I've done a video looking at each set that's rotating out and the cards that we're losing. I've done a video about decks that are not going to be good after rotation. I've done a video about decks that are going to survive the rotation quite nicely. I think I've covered the rotation well enough at this stage. But there is one trend I want to look at today. And that is a trend that getting rid of tools is about to become way, way more difficult than it used to be. Because, you see, we're losing Field Blower. And, and Field Blower is huge. Field Blower is a one or two of in essentially every deck at the moment because it removes tools and it removes stadium cards. It's what it does. And everybody plays it to remove tools and stadium cards. So it means whatever tool you're playing, it's never that safe. Because your opponent can always just draw a Field Blower. But you see, last rotation, we lost Puzzle of Time. And Puzzle of Time was our way to recover item cards. And look, in Unbroken Bonds, we're getting Malayne. And Malayne allows you to essentially discard two metal energy from your hand so that you can get a trainer card from your discard pile and shuffle it into your deck. And there's a great combo here with Mount Coronet, where you pick up two Metal Energy using Mount Coronet, discard them with Malayne, and essentially, when you've got a Mount Coronet out, Malayne reads, shuffle a trainer card from your discard pile back into your deck. But there just aren't that many Metal decks around at the moment. The fact of the matter is, item recovery is not good. But it doesn't matter if you don't have the item in the first place. We had Tool Scrapper a little while ago, and then everyone was like, well, now we got Startling Megaphone. And then both of those went away, and people were like, yeah, let's actually legitimately use Beedrilly X for tool removal. I'm not joking, that was a thing. It was basically for Garboda, because you needed to be able to get rid of Garboda. Also, really nice in Vileplume decks, because Vileplume couldn't have played an item card if they wanted to. But then... It's all right, because we got Field Blower. And Field Blower came along, and Field Blower fixed everything. Well, now Field Blower's rotating out, and here's the thing, right? We still got Faber. And I've made this point in a couple of videos, but let me make it again now, super clearly. Who cares? Now, look, I'm not saying Faber is a bad card. Faber is a good card. And Faber doesn't actually pop it in the discard pile. Faber pops it in the... Lost Zone. And it ain't coming back. Not for the Lost Zone. That's kind of where it got the name. The thing is, firstly, who's playing Faber? And secondly, let's assume you are playing Faber. Does it really matter? Because in order to use Faber, they've got to not use their supporter for their turn. Ooh, I'd really like to KO one of the Pokemon on their bench, but let's not play a Guzma so I can use a Faber. Ooh, my Tag Team GX is about to get KO'd. I could heal it with an Ace Roller, but no, I'm, I'm going to play a Faber. I need to refill my hand. I'd love to play a Cynthia right now, but no, I'm going to play a Faber. And I'm not saying you'll never play Faber, but I am saying that Faber's not really that good. You're giving up your supporter card for the turn, and it will be worth it sometimes, but it's awkward. The exception here is if you're using Lieutenant Surge's strategy, which will let you play two supporters in addition to itself, and at that point, yes, I can see it happening. So there's my preamble on why tools are safe, and as soon as tools are safe, let's go back to Shedinja and Fairy Charms. Now, Fairy Charms, we've got a whole bunch of them, but what they do is they give immunity to the Pokemon to whom it is attached from any of a particular kind of Pokemon. So one of the ones we see coming out in Unbroken Bonds is Fairy Charm Lightning. And what's great about Fairy Charm Lightning is that it gives you immunity from Lightning-type EXs and GXs. I should mention Fairy Charms only protect against EXs and GXs. Well, that's all right. 
Because Picarom is blatantly an, an EX or a GX. So you're fine? Maybe you're worried about Blacephalon. Oh no, there is no Fairy Charm Fire. What are we possibly going to do? Yeah, we're going to use Fairy Charm UB to give yourself immunity from EX and GX. Ultra Beast Pokemon. So now, you've got those Fairy Pokemon, and you can just sit there and get absolute immunity. Sylveon GX has long been a Pokemon that can really rely on on slowing your opponent down. Yeah, the problem is that's rotating. Which sucks, because Sylveon would love this. But Sylveon's alright, because we've got Gardevoir and Sylveon. And ladies and gentlemen, I love Gardevoir and Sylveon here. Now, they've kind of been taking advantage of this for a little while, because they've got their GX attack that makes you shuffle your entire hand into your deck. So they would do that, then attach a Fairy Charm, and maybe... You draw into Field Blower? But it's fairly unlikely, because you're literally in top deck mode with all of your cards back in your deck. It's unlikely. And to be honest, even if they do draw a Field Blower, who cares? Because they've drawn a Field Blower, but they don't have any other cards in hand. What will suck is if they draw like a Cynthia, play Cynthia, and then grab a Field Blower, that would be bad. But that's a risk we take. So now, all of a sudden, your Fairy Pokemon can have legitimate immunity. And as much as I love Gardevoir and Sylveon here, because they can move energy when they attack, so you can essentially move energy and then heal, and I like that very much. Although, again, we are losing Ace Roller, which would generally be how you'd heal. But I really like the idea of this with Granbull. Because Choice Band's rotating, so I don't really care about Choice Band anymore. We love Choice Band. But as I showed you in a video very recently, Granbull doesn't really want to play Choice Band anymore. Choice Band was great when everyone was playing 180, 190 HP Pokemon, but now we're rocking Tag Team GXs. 190 just ain't going to cut it. Even Shroud of Punishment putting you up to 200 isn't going to cut it. So Granbull decks have generally dropped Choice Band. And now they're playing Bodybuilding Dumbbells. Uh, and incidentally, that's also <laughs> rotating out. So Gramble's going to need a new tool. And what you can do here is pick your worst matchup and just play a bunch of fairy charms. Or to be honest, because Gramble is probably going to be playing Red's Challenge, you can actually play a variety here and just search for the one you need when you need it. And this could make Gramble great. Because if you're playing a bunch of Fairy Charm Lightning, and you're against a deck that's playing Pikachu and Zekrom, and Zapdos, and generally just playing Lightning Pokemon, they, they basically have to concede. Because maybe they're playing one or two Faber, but let's say they are playing one Faber. Okay, they play Faber. They take a KO. That's not good. Now, Zapdos I mentioned a second ago as a Lightning Pokemon, remember... Zapdos can hit you because they're a non-GX. But when I said they're only playing Pikachu and Zekrom and Zapdos, etc., I wasn't meaning that you can block Zapdos with Fairy Charm Lightning. I meant that you don't really mind Zapdos attacking you. Because here's the thing, Zapdos, if it became active this turn, hit 80. Now, to be fair, they can start playing Electro Power to get a one-hit KO. But even if they do... They need two. Two Electro Power just to take one prize off a of Granbull. And you're getting a one-hit KO on them. So Granbull's a great option here, but any Fairy deck will do. But we need to have a look at Shedinja here, because Shedinja's got a rather ridiculous ability. Once during your turn, before you may attack, you may discard all cards attached to this Pokemon and attach it to one of your Pokemon as a Pokemon tool. And when that Pokemon is KO'd, your opponent takes one fewer prize card it's literally life due now there are some really cool uses for this you can attach this to a miss magius and then you ko miss magius draw until you got seven cards in hand but don't take a prize but i think there's better uses here we saw this just the other day in a frost last list that i showed you but i honestly think the best thing to do here is pick a non-gx deck and just play this in it 
Because if you're playing a non-GX deck, your opponent is taking one prize every time they take a KO. So they've got to take six KOs to go and win. The thing is, every Shedinja is an extra KO. So it's not six KOs to win the game, it's seven KOs, eight KOs. And alright, you might not be able to recover Pokemon tools very easily. And we might lose Rescue Stretcher, so it's harder to get Pokemon back. But we still got stuff like Brock's Grit that you can use. And I think that's where Shedinja is becoming awesome. The biggest downside with Shedinja here is that it's a stage one, so it takes up a little bit of space in your deck. But it can swing the prize race in your favor. Life Dew was so good, it was an Ace Spec Trainer card. You could only have one Ace Spec Trainer of any description in your deck. So if you played a life dew, you couldn't play a computer search. And you couldn't play a dowsing machine. Not so here, ladies and gentlemen. Not so here. I really, really like these cards post-rotation. And look, we had Tool Scrapper, then Startling Megaphone, then Field Blower. There is every possibility that we do get another Pokemon Tool removal card. But there was a period of time where we didn't have one before Field Blower came out. And even if we only get a small period of time here, during that period of time, you really need to start taking these cards seriously. Because I am extremely confident that you are going to see people running into tournaments, playing these cards against opponents who are frankly unprepared and getting fairly easy wins. So I'm a huge fan of these cards post-rotation, but I would very much like to know what you're thinking about them. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, but do please remember to be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassy plays where we talk about other games that don't have pokemon in but by far the most important thing as always Look after yourselves till next time thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.